the threat of Moonlight Shuriken from Radiant Green Ninja taking out Beldums and dismantling your ability to play the game whatsoever. Seeing the prizes now, two Ionos, a Super Rod, not too terrible as long as his opening hand is great, but on Grant Shen's side, losing out on Bidoof, if the game goes long, could be a little rough. These are fair and balanced prize cards. Mm -hmm. This is what we're looking for as we go into our finals. Both players with an equal opportunity here. But the real question is, Who's going first? Because we know Andrew Hedrick understands how important that could be in this matchup. Andrew did indeed choose to go first, but Grant gets to draw two cards after some mulligan. So I think that's a nice payoff. All Don't right. get blown up by Moonlight Shuriken. In exchange, my opponent starts with two extra cards in the hand. Getting down into the game, finally. Andrew Hedrick starts with Origin Form. Dialga V in the active spot and benches a Radiant Greninja. Discards one oh. metal energy from the hand to draw two with concealed cards. This isn't great. There is no buddy buddy, no nest ball, no nothing. Oh, We're not passing like this. the turn. Just a Bidoof in the active spot. There's still a lot of leeway for Andrew to recover this pretty anemic opening of his. Pokestop, raw. Oh. Only gets a canceling no. cologne. But he rubbed his hands together to try to make that into something, but. Not seeing too much off of Pokestop. Just going to go Ultra Ball. Discard that Canceling Cologne and the Lightning Energy. Regan Retzloff did this beautifully in his games on stream. Get the Lightning in the discard pile early on. And that way, when it's time for Iron Hands EX, just bring it right back with Superior Energy Retrieval. That's right. You want to know where this card is at all times so that you can potentially work in those additional prize cards. Maybe sneak in uh, a way to surprise your opponent. But at this spot now... It's multiple Ultra Ball. Uh, you're going to lose a lot of resources in this hand. Radiant Greninja has the opportunity to bail you out. Maybe find one of those Nest Balls, Buddy Buddy Poffins. Going to need some help, though. Ultra Ball does pick up Radiant Greninja, so that's going to be nice. Grant Shen, as we've seen time and time again, moves all his Pokemon to the front, takes a really deep dive into the list to study, see what's missing with the prize cards before doing a heavy shuffle to fully randomize that deck and keep on playing. A lot of chatter, a lot of back and forth between both players. They very much enjoyed their tournament runs, playing decks that they enjoy. And, you know, Andrew Hedrick playing Dialga. Who'd have thought it'd be us in the finals? Not me. <laughs> I knew I was going to see uh, Chen Pao. <laughs> there were <laughs> plenty of those There up. were rumors that, that Dialga V was pretty favored into Charizard, but nobody was brave enough to actually take the time to test it until uh, Drew Kennett, I believe it was, had a nice, solid performance at a previous regional. And now Andrew Hedrick has picked up the torch and taken it all the way here to the finals of yep. Indianapolis. As Pablo says, the Dialga Leavers are, are finally <laughs> showing up. Ooh, this was important. We saw the Fridgebacks thrown back in with the Super Rod, but it's the Nest Ball that will be the payoff card here to at least have an additional resource as Frigibax is going to be very vital. Now Grant has to consider, does this Ultra Ball go for Chen Pao and promote that into the active and find water energies? Do you go for second Frigibax and sacrifice this lone Bidoof? I think I don't if like any you of that. are <laughs> anticipating the game not to go too long, it feels as though the game is going to be decided, right? Who's going to get established first? Who's going to get their big knockouts first? Maybe Grant Shen is willing to give up the longevity of the Barrel and instead opt for another Frigibax or Chen Pao, as you said. So, yeah, with these resources that we see, obviously, Ultra Ball, Double Superior Energy Retrieval, these are cards you don't want to throw away if you don't have to. Maybe it's Energy Retreat into Radiant Greninja and pass the turn over. Hopefully your opponent, even though they've already shown weakness, doesn't at least have... Uh, energy attachment, or uh, not even energy attachment, as long as it's the Dowg of mm -hmm. V-Star and a boss's orders, that'd be enough to remove the Frigibax from play, which is pretty dangerous. And if they're going after Frigibax, there is still the threat with Raiding Greninja being safe. Because Andrew Hedrick would need to find Buddy Buddy Poff in here, get some Beldums, try to evolve them into Matang before it's too late and they get taken out by Moonlight Shuriken. Oh, the next card is a Nest Ball. Was that close to a Beldum? But it will show up on this turn now. We see Boss's Orders in hand, but there is no Dialga V-Star. Pokestop could change that. You could 
go and spin the wheel, try to find Ultra Ball. I don't, I don't really love that right here. Raiding Greninja can draw some additional cards, mm -hmm. but you're looking for a little more help than this. Yeah, Andrew Hedrick has really been leaning into Zamazenta for a lot of the games we've seen him play on stream. Has Mew EX in the hand, a card that he dislikes playing, at least in this matchup. Really doesn't like to put these easy prize cards into play. It's nice, it's cheeky to use genome hacking to copy Moonlight Shuriken in certain spots. But generally speaking, if you've got Radiant Greninja in play, you don't need the Mew EX. But I'm wondering if in this position he's that desperate for Buddy Poffins and potential for Beldums, if he can thin the hand down and restart to see a little bit more. Yeah, of course, Beldums played down early are going to be one of the most important pieces to the deck. You need to evolve those into Matangs, which have that safety threshold. 100 hit points protects you from that Moonlight Shuriken, mm. which is potentially something you, you can see as early as the second turn. Grant's going to roll up the sleeves once more. As soon as you see that card, you know game's on. and you, you just hope to see only one. Yeah, Grant Shen is happy. He was incredibly confident in his top four match. And he always strikes this perfect balance of being very locked in, but also relaxed. These veteran players don't let a lot of nerves get to them, even here in the finals of the largest regional of all time. And Andrew Hedrick, with so many regional wins under his belt as well, feeling very comfortable in his hot seat. And both players a little bit more chatter, very much enjoying their match, discussing the matchup in general, both perhaps speculating that they're going to have to be playing this matchup a lot more in the future. Yeah, well, uh, they also have a bonding opportunity here, too, where both of them are not drawing ideal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be a slow game, and there's a lot of time on the clock. Don't judge me for the ridiculous things I may have to do. Uh, I might spin that wheel. <laughs> that, that's the Dialga player mindset. I have to do some very very ridiculous things to stay in the game. Please look away while I spin this Pokestop <laughs> and hope for a Buddy Buddy Here we go. In. Spin the wheel. Ultra Ball would be Ooh, a nice find. Uh, okay, Nest Ball's not too bad. That's another Beldum. Yeah, two Beldum. I wonder which Pokemon <laughs> would want to do something about that. Nest Ball. One more Beldum. It's fine. There's no way he's going to have the rare candy back Scalloper. Superior energy retrieval. Every time you say that out loud, there's no way they have it. Chen Pao has it. This is why you don't go for the second Beldum. <laughs> because uh, you can't afford to give your opponent the, not only uh, those two cards, but also those two prizes. Mm -hmm, and maybe mm -hmm. you can find an opportunity where you are developing a threat in the active spot. You can take a knockout or at least put pressure on your opponent and then uh, stick down the two Beldums. Hopefully they're able to evolve on that following turn. This matchup becomes very strange without access to Matang. You're cobbling together a lot of uh, low economy attacks with just a couple energy attached onto a Dialga V-Star, for example, trying to rely on Zamazenta as your end game attacker to close out versus Chen Power, try to take down Iron Hands EX, for example. Skarzig. Do you want to play two Super Rod to see one card to hopefully see Dialga V-Star? It, it's a line that... You I know don't. what? You're already on the crazy train. You spun the stop, thin down, draw some with, with Mew EX. I've done it before. I, I like the safer approach, but it'd be so <laughs> cool if you knocked out Fridgebacks this turn. Understandably so. Not worth that kind of risk. Iono is played down. Okay. And a buddy buddy off of this would be fantastic. Ultra Ball and a Matang, beautifully done, can evolve Ooh. the Dialga V in the active spot. Yeah, this is this brings up some questions. Is this now. is this everything he needs? Well, I mean, energy is there, but you can't take the knockout anyways. The max that you're dealing is oh, 120. 120, so you're a little Radiant short. Radiant Greninja, 130 HP, surviving so many pinches in the early game thanks to that key number. So Andrew Hedrick opting to spread the energy around, not too shabby. Yep, Metal Coating is going to be the play. Hold on to those resources and stick to the game plan. Single Beldum on the opportunity for the Moonlight Shuriken. Don't give your opponent all of that momentum. Both of those prize cards. Unfortunately, you gave them a new hand. And uh, there's potential for this to be gasped, but barrel to start.
Ultra Ball discards a Silene. Grant Chen knows this game is not going to go too long. Doesn't need this late game resource. And this play with Metal Coating, having this Dialga V in the active spot with three energies attached, forces Grant Chen to put his foot on the accelerator. Get a Chen Pao out here to take this threat from the active spot before Star Kronos happens. Well, this hand, there's Chen Pao, there's Energy to Retreat, there is Irida to search out Rare Candy by Excalibur. Full restart with the Industrious Incisors ready to roll and Heavy Ball to find the backup Bidoof. It lines up so smoothly, but you have to have a knockout on this active Dialga V because if your opponent's able to work in the Star Kronos this early, there's no way that you have a Baxcalibur after two turns back to back. Exactly. So now with the Bidoof found from Heavy Ball, put onto the bench, Industrious Incisor drawing up. Rare Candy is there. Concealed cards to discard the water energy to draw two more, Kyle. Finds the payoff card in the rare candy, but has yet to use the Irida. Yeah, flipping through the hand very quickly. That tells me he has the play lined up and is just thinking about the sequencing. It is going to be Irida, of course. Finds back Scalibur, and what's the item card from this position? Yeah, you could maybe even go for Earthen Vessel if you want to hold on to the superior energy retrieval. I think there's that opportunity in combination with Shivery Chill to take the knockout with just four water energies. But it just depends on what Grant values at this point. He's only got the one Frigibac, so maybe finding that second one would bring him a little more solace as he knows that boss's orders chained together with Star Kronos is uh, dangerous for him. Mm -hmm. And the item pick from Irida is going to be Buddy Buddy Poffin, just some additional discard fodder. And... Andrew Hedrick and Grant Shen are very aware. They're discussing it on the table now how volatile this matchup is, how it is the strike and counter-strike oriented gameplay, forcing your opponent to keep up with your threats and your pacing. Otherwise, they will get put completely in the dirt. Three water energies already in the discard pile. There's the buddy buddy boffin you just found. It's not exactly the resource you want, but you have everything you need. Rare Candy back, Excalibur. Energy to move the Radiant Greninja and bring the Chimp out into the active spot. Yep, four water energy. The, the knockout is there. Grant Shen buying himself some time, right? Uh, getting a threat off of the board is oh, so important. Just you to know stay alive. what? <gasps> this is definitely a line you can go down as well. Tell me about this. R Moonlight Shuriken, I wasn't considering just going after the Beldum, saying, well, but what if you can't start Kronos, though? The, the, the issue here is when you remove the Metang, Star Kronos isn't available. There's only three energies mm -hmm. on the Dao to mm -hmm. V, so Dao V Star isn't going to be able to reach that threshold. The issue is the Radiant Greninja can be knocked out if there's the other resources, maybe a boss's orders or whatever. You could knock out Baxcalibur, have Dao V Star in play, and start to bench Beldums. So you have this window of opportunity for Andrew now to put a threat in play, but also maybe work in that Metang on the following turn. And this is double Beldum now. Means that Andrew Hedrick must respond to Radiant Greninja or else get punished once again by Moonlight Shuriken. And by doing so, must give up the Dialga V in the active. There is a line here of attach another energy, go for Temporal Rupture versus uh, trying to evolve the Dialga V and okay. save the energy. You have to attach four either way, like we talked about with Metal Blast. So I do like the rupture here. Yep, this accomplishes the knockout. Once again, new hand. We see that third Beldum that could be played down, so Metang would be guaranteed, even if Super Rod were able to bring back Radiant Greninja and it would be able to take down the two Beldums. It's just a dangerous spot. It's three Beldums, just like across the table, we see three Frigibacks from time to time. Andrew Hedrick trying to remain resilient versus the threat of Moonlight Shuriken to keep Star Kronos down as a threat. 
with Randy Greninja being knocked out. Andrew Hedrick takes one prize to even things up, and Grant Chin immediately promotes Chen Pao to take a response knockout against Origin Form Dial Gavi. Right. Is this enough pressure now? Do you respect it in this regard? Because this is a four energy Dial Gavi. Mm -hmm. You have to assume that it's going to take knockouts, work in Star Kronos, put you in a, a difficult spot but you also want to remove those Beldums. You don't want them to be Matangs. We saw how important that was to Grant on the previous turn, but your opponent can also just Star Kronos if you don't handle this Pokemon. They could re-bench Beldums and then evolve them into Matangs on the next turn. Oh. You don't get a chance to Moonlight Shuriken them. Yes, I love this, this uh, split threat of, well, now it's just one more energy attachment even if I don't have Matang. So Grant Shen doesn't want to go out of his way to recover the Radiant Greninja, wants to start beating down. I'm gonna go for Pokestop. <laughs> Nest, Nest, and Cypher Maniac going to the discard pile. Immediately cashes in both Nest balls. Wants to hold one because Super Rod leads to finding that Pokemon with the final Nest ball, but he has oh. to thin the hand down enough mm -hmm. so that he can make use of the Bavarel. Still has Backscalibur. Nice super cold attachment, thinning down even more. Yeah, at and this point, again. Your superior energy retrieval is the way that you will use this Pokemon. You find that Irida's found. And another Chen Pao. And you can't put this on the bench because of Star Chronos Metal Blast. Giving up four prizes into that combo turn. Grant Shen has to play this more like Lost Box, where you play your big attacking threat, get it powered up immediately at the same turn. Andrew Hedrick isn't playing, has four Iono, and hopefully Bibarel can uh, get him out of those situations to recover these cards if he does get punished for needing to keep them in hand like this. And the resources are there. The Super Rod is able to bring back the Radiant Greninja, Superior Energy Retrieval, also lined up. There's even a world where you rare candy into the second Backscalibur if you want to play down a ton of cards and refill with the second Industrious Incisors. This so. is the break, this is certainly the break point. Andrew Hedrick has now, with the Dialgavi in the active spot, threat of up to three Matang next turn and another Dialgavi on the bench with an energy attachment the likelihood of Star Chronos happening almost uh, regardless of what Grant Shen does in response is massive. His only saving grace certainly is that Andrew Hedrick maybe only takes three prize cards with that combination rather than ending the game outright. Yep, Radiant Greninja is found. You can try to target down these Beldums, remove them from play, but at that point you're left in a pretty precarious situation as Dialga V-Star is likely going to show up. You have the Star Kronos that could target down Backscalibur, maybe remove another Backscalibur. If you move both those from play, you're in a dangerous spot. So Grant Shen now, along with setting up the energies for Moonlight Shuriken, also has to leave enough energies in play to threaten with a Chen Pao. So how many energies can you find on this turn? You have the one superior energy retrieval. It's, it's not a lot of energies, but at least you'll have one prize card available even if the Miracle Star Kronos turn happens. After the Superior, three go on to Radiant Greninja, perhaps one more kept in the hand, which is what Grant Chen likes to do. Decides to attach now to keep the Chen Pao fully ready to go to take up arms on the next turn. Ooh, doesn't like the Radiant Greninja. I feel like those prize cards would be available if you work in the Radiant Greninja final time, but these Metangs, once once they're at 100 hit points, they're, they're gonna stick around. Grant Shen playing the odds here. You need potentially Ultra Ball to find Dialga V, potentially Ultra Ball to find Metang. With no Radiant Greninja, that's less card draw to get those cards. Your hand is pretty big. I don't think you can thin down and go for a restart on Mew. I know you want to use Boss's orders this turn with Star Kronos, so that means no research, no Iono to find those cards. And what I'm seeing in the hand right now, Kyle, I don't know if Dialga V-Star is there. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. I don't see an energy, even if there were the Super Rod Nest Ball combination we see that could bring back the Radiant Greninja to draw with concealed cards. A lot of players do opt for lines like this. You think, what is the worst case scenario for me? What if my opponent has this? What if my opponent has that? And then you have to shake your head and say, it's pretty unlikely, isn't it? Yeah. And that's what Grant Shen is opting for right now. 
seltsame Sente. It does have its augmented damage available on Retaliate, but three energies to attach is a pretty tall order off of only one Matang with five energy still in play. And Andrew Hedrick with, I think, one Super Rod in the hand. Yeah, I've seen at least one. To find a Star Chronos turn, it likely means that you're using that Iono on this turn, but you're not attacking a relevant Pokemon that Radiant Greninja it's not much of a threat anymore to you. You'd like to combo that with a card like that Prime Catcher, but then which Pokemon is moving? You don't Ooh, have Pokestop a Pokestop looking for Ultra Ball. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Those aren't great. Super Rod can at least bring that Pokemon back into the mix. That is more metal energy in the discard pile. Considering putting the Diago V-Star back in, Max Mind's a chance of trying to draw this. Super Rod puts those down, and looks like it might just be an Iono after all. Basically mulligan to the Pokestop. <laughs> <laughs> just, that was a mistake. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put those back in. And you know that it's an awkward position as the Dialga player when you're being forced to dig desperately for resources like this to put attacks together. Grant Shen's intuition for this matchup has really paid off. I mean, look at all these energies we're finding at this point. And they're they're all over Zombazenta. the place. The issue is you haven't found the energies for uh, on Furry to Dialga V-Star. <laughs> if Ultra Ball was the mm. card that was found off of the Pokestop, then things are completely different. Boss's Orders is comboed with this. One energy goes to the active Pokemon, and then you have Star Kronos lined up to start to potentially work on that thread of double Baxcalibur that you're eyeing down here. But wants to go for the boss's Orders anyway. Double-checking the resources, seeing what should come up. Is it a Baxcalibur? Is it a Chen Pao? Do I want two prizes? Then Star Kronos becomes almost guaranteed to take three. But Grant Shen in a position maybe to bring up Matang. It might be too little too late with four energies on Dialga V. So Andrew Hedrick has used the threat of Star Kronos to create space for himself to develop a board state like ooh, this. Ooh, ooh. Knockout onto the barrel, and that means that the Star Chrono strategy could come down to prime catchers, Ionos, leave your opponent with just one, mm -hmm. one card remaining in hand, and hopefully superior energy retrieval can't get the job done. Grand Chen can prep for these kind of things, though. The, ants, the, the, uh, the big piece is you cannot play down another EX Pokemon. You can't play down the Iron Hands, the Chen Pao, because your opponent will easily capitalize Double Star Kronos Knockout, well, Star Kronos Metal Blast. Mm -hmm. And Grant Shen pushed his odds, pushed his luck last time, just took out the Radiant Greninja, took out a Beldum, wanted to deny that draw engine to reduce the likelihood of Star Kronos, and it paid off. But I don't think he can take that risk once again. Superior Energy Retrieval finds four water energies. This will be enough to knock out the Dialga V in the active spot. And here comes some super colds. Is there going to be enough leftover energy, Kyle, to threaten Moonlight Shuriken, to still threaten Hail Blade? This now puts the pressure on your opponent to evolve that Beldum at some point, or Radiant Greninja will be able to take that final prize card, as it looks like Chen Pao is uh, lined up pretty well to remove this Dialga V for play. Mm. And the second Dialga V on the bench, Andrew Hedrick had potential to just take a knockout with Zamazenta, of course, but the importance of maintaining the looming threat of Star Kronos has been something that Andrew Hedrick has leaned into heavily over the course of this weekend, and it does affect the way your opponent navigates these turns so heavily. Grant Chen has made his hand and his deck Chin Pao, Super Rod, Superior Energy Retrieval, and Prime Catcher. <laughs> He's got a couple other pieces in between, but with Pokestop and Industrious Incisors, Shivery Chill, he should be able to find the pieces to avoid Iono being as detrimental as Andrew Hedrick wants it to be. One prize remaining, but can Andrew sneak an additional turn? That is the question, and that's the card. Even with Star Kronos, can't win this turn. Can take out Chen Pao. It might be the line you spoke of, Kyle, of 
getting rid of the Baxcalibers, but thanks to the prepped energy on Radiant Greninja, the prepped energy on Chen Pao, just denying the Baxcalibur no longer guarantees victory. We don't care about these. At this point, Chen Pao is able to take the knockout. You see those energies lined up, knocking out the barrel in combination with Iono seems to be uh, potential, and the Mew EX is played down now too. Now that there really isn't any harm to put this in play, might as well get it out of the hand. Andrew Hedrick, and this is with the potential of Star Kronos, knocks out Chen Pao, uses a boss or what have you to get rid of the Radiant Greninja. Grant Chen will still have, 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 have access to Buster Tail and simply needs that prime catcher to bring up a Matang and take the final prize to close out this first game. Still need to see at least one energy from the Metal Maker for the Dialga V-Star in order for Star Kronos to be live. Iona will be used first. This gives you an opportunity to find a card like Super Rod mm. to maximize those chances. As, yeah, it seems likely, but we've seen many, many a time where this card either finds three medals or no medals. Yeah, maybe even a Matang for good measure. Having two shots would be great from this point. Ultra Ball to thin down a little bit more. Super Rod found as well. Oh, it's, it's beautiful, Kyle. Well, now we get to the, your favorite debate <laughs> where you can play down this entire hand and then have the choice of restart or metal maker. <laughs> hmm. Based on the amount of energy that are in the deck versus the discard pile, well, there's a big clump of metal <laughs> energies right there in the middle. And then I think that this is exactly the sort of line that Andrew is also weighing. How many are in play versus in deck versus in the discard pile with a super rod? I certainly think it's just Super Rod. No, no, you restart, then Super Rod, then Double Metal Maker. All right. Because you've already attached from your hand for turn, so drawing energy is really bad. So you just draw now while the odds are, are at their lowest. Andrew's going to try to find the pieces. Because if, you, to if maybe... you draw two cards, and if one of them is Metal Energy, you're still kind of coming out ahead because you're putting three metal energy back in the deck. So you want to thin down, I think, as much as possible. Yep, now the debate here is you can use the Super Rod before all this, place the Radiant Greninja into the deck, and if you draw into that Pokemon, if you're finding those energies off of the restart, then it's not that bad because you could continue to draw. Mm, but you, you're placing the bet now that you will find an energy alongside the Radiant Greninja. Right. At, at the end of the day, if you draw a Radiant Greninja and no energy, then re restart is godlike regardless. So this is an oddly effective in-between play. <laughs> the math for this deck is so arcane, Kyle. We can only begin to fathom it. No. Grant's going to pretend to read that card as <laughs> Andrew draws three. He says, I've got two turns. What? No energy. The deck is still chock full, Kyle. Yep. Ultra Ball could find that Radiant Greninja like we were talking about, too, that you could thin out one additional card. Maybe Metal Maker doesn't find Radiant Greninja. Oh, he's and thinking instead, about it. He's it thinking about the it. the energy you need. I mean, the odds are there. You, you're going to see eight cards. But maybe if this one misses, you play the Ultra Ball. Uh oh. One. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Studying these cards well, as well. Okay, so this is also important. You see boss's orders, it goes to the bottom. Mm -hmm. You choose to make some metal. Ah, you see so plenty that's of cards. why he saved the Ultra Ball. If something important goes to the bottom, you Prime Ultra catcher. Ball to shuffle to get those back in the mix. Yep, Prime Catcher is also going to be thrown down to the bottom. So two Attaching pretty energy. nice resources there. Attaching energy to Matang to kind of get any stall plays headed off at the pass. Also, yeah, this is that additional turn we were talking about using Star Kronos. Down to a two prizes remaining, but there is no two prize Pokemon available. What is, the, what is the worst spot you can put your opponent in? They um, already have one card remaining. Hmm. Has to be eyeing down that barrel. Try to Iono, try to get Prime Catcher, take out the Babero, leave Grant Shent with one card. All right, do you know which 
order the cards are in at this point because you've placed them down. You can research, and he believes he can find that prime catcher now in this spot. Should be in this top seven, he's hoping. There it is. Yes, he's shaking so his safe. head. <laughs> Remembering the order of the deck after you've meddled Makered and playing uh, your deck in reverse is something that he talked about earlier on in the stream. So now with Bibaro coming up to the active spot with Mew EX, with Prime Catcher, you just, with its free retreat, you can bring Dialga right back into the active spot. One card remaining here. This Pokemon should be out of the mix pretty soon. You've got 280 hit points in the active and one-to-one -one prize cards. Quite a turnaround when you get an extra turn. No answer with the Radiant Greninja. All the hit points are there. Mm -hmm. Grant Chain gets one draw plus potential for concealed cards and potential for Pokestop to get some fuel for superior energy retrieval. Try to take up a Buster Tail plus Prime Catcher play. After the restart from Mew, Dialga V-Star once again back in the active spot for Metal Blast to take down Grant Shen's draw engine. We thought that he had the line with one prize card remaining. It would be so cut and done, but draws for turn. Is there enough here, Kyle? Is that a superior energy retrieval. He just needs to see some items, find some prime catcher. Prime catcher, but no superior. There's not enough cards to use the superior energy retrieval and the prime catcher. Needed one more item. Oh, Can you no. incorporate Chen Pao into the mix? Is there any energies available? I feel like we've seen them already. Yeah, they're all there. Oh, so he can't Chen Pao retreat, Shivery Chill, concealed cards. There's not enough energy, right? One, two, three. One more item Six, there. seven, eight. All eight water. I don't know yet. Okay. The answer's not there. I think I need to draw two. So then Pokestop, after all right. being so used already. You can use the superior energy evil, find all four energies. You have concealed cards. Now it just banks on what resources are left. But losing that prime catcher. Is there a boss in there? There's no boss in here. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I'm thinking. Like, that's the only way to get around the, this Dialga, right? The Chen Pao, it's not possible to... Might as well take a look. Sees two cards remain. Finds the Chen Pao. Are the energies lined up? I thought I had one more energy. No, he says, he says he thought he had one more energy, <laughs> but that's not the more. case. This is going to be 240. Yeah, not wow. enough. So close. But cannot get the job done against Dialga V-Star. What a game one. Both players with one prize card remaining, digging deep into the dredges of their list to put these final attacks together. And the more I see this matchup, Kyle, the more similar I feel that these two decks are operating. How do you feel? I can't get over the fact that Grant Shen almost won that game right then and there. He was one item away from closing out there. There was Earthen Vessel. There was Super Rod. There were, mm -hmm. it, it didn't even matter what it was. As long as it was an item, he could hold on to the resources to close out in that spot and was that close. Yeah, had the Prime Catcher, just needed something else to discard with Superior Energy Retrieval, power up Buster Tail, bring up a Matang. Yep, it was, it was all there and Grant's gonna wonder about, was there an opportunity to put another Water Energy back in the deck at some point in time? There was that uh, burning of the double nest ball. There were some liberal uses of Buddy Buddy Poffin early on in the game. And this is, of course, to thin the hand down to use industrious incisors. Yeah, but you don't often think that you'll need useless item cards off Pokestop to get the job done, but Iono to one does that to you. Taking down the Bivarels, two Bivarels at that over the course of the game to prep for the Iono to put him into that position was so smart by Andrew Hedrick despite how awkward it was to build up Beldums against the onslaughts of Moonlight Shuriken, trying to establish Dialga V as a ticking time bomb in the active spot, threatening Star Kronos. And after taking all of these odd prizes, Grant Shen ends up on one, and Andrew Hedrick properly recognizing his deck ordering to draw into Prime Catcher at the absolutely perfect moment. Yeah, it's, it's what we've been talking about and what Andrew uh, Kennett was talking to us about. It's so important to know exactly what resources you're move, maneuvering there. See Another the prize pretty cards laid clean out. prize map. Uh, yeah. Nothing really interesting stuck in there. Going to be a good, clean game, too. All right.
right, we are underway here. Grand Shen starting things off. Going first, it's such an important benefit in this matchup to be able to threaten with that Moonlight Shuriken. And Andrew with the Lone Beldum. Yeah, this is Andrew Hedrick's biggest fear. Chen, uh, Chen Pao goes first, gets all set up with Frigibax and Radiant Greninja, and once it passes over to Andrew Hedrick's turn, he his Beldums are very, very vulnerable. And folks, it doesn't matter if you're playing the 60 HP Beldum, the 70 HP Beldum, Moonlight Shuriken does not care. You haven't been able to see the rest of the hands, but... Of course, that Shen Pao in the Axis spot generally just leads to great things happening. Those uh, energy cards, being able to throw those away with Ultra Ball and find those resources you need, know where those water energies are for the first superior energy retrieval. Oh, my goodness. This hand. <laughs> I think I saw Radiant Greninja, if I'm not mistaken. This is great. <laughs> There's Sasuian Heavy Ball, Nest Ball, Rare Candy, Radiant Greninja, and now these energies to go along with it. You have to think that the ability for a turn two Moonlight Shuriken will be available. And if you're Andrew Hedrick, once you see these Pokemon hitting the bench, you're already starting to sweat. You've got to think, okay, I've got one Beldum in the active spot. And what's your ideal uh, bench? Two Dialga V, Raining Greninja, as many Beldums as you can fit. Will it be enough? You might even have to forego the Dialga, which is so uh, terrifying as well. Sure, if you get your Matangs, then you're leaning too heavily into Zamazenta, which is vulnerable to Iron Hands. Free Frigibax from the Concealed Cards, and now Nest Ball to search out some additional Pokemon. Rare Candy Ultra Ball in hand. There's no pressure on that opening turn, so you don't have to overextend and look for another Frigibax in this spot. You can feel pretty comfortable with this hand. Now you have to kind of play it off as, eh, this isn't a hand you want to Iono. Mm -hmm. I didn't really accomplish much, did I, Andrew? And Grant Shen held on to the Asuian Heavy Ball, right? After studying the opening deck search during Shivery Chill, wants to keep that item as discard fodder. Very nice efficiency there. Andrew Hedrick, <laughs> meanwhile, not even going to show us the hand, just goes Iono. <laughs> Grant, Grant couldn't even stop. He just smiles. He's like, man, I just put the best hand on the bottom of the deck. <laughs> And that Asuian Heavy Ball is still going to be in there for later on down the road, Kyle. Oh, this hand is so much worse. <laughs> okay, okay, the Beldums are here. Yeah, the Beldum this, triplets. For, for Andrew, this is great. He's, he's finding some of those resources. Nest Ball can find that Dialga V, and you're just hoping to only lose one Beldum this turn. This matchup is such a dogfight. Both players zooming along on this parallel path trying to establish their game plans, trying to establish their combos and strategies, and then they overlap and clash at these key moments of interactions once their attackers are established, trying to knock their opponent down a couple pegs and pull further ahead in that race. Yeah, classically, you'll see Grant uh, be able to extend an early advantage, and that's just what that Star Cronus is, is there for. You have that ability to fight back, and Grant has to plan for two turns at every point in time, and that is the problem. When you only have five bench spaces, you can only play down two Backscalibur, two Babarrel, uh, one Shen Pao, because you can't play down two and give up all those prize cards. And, and then there's that opportunity, of course, to attack, attack the hand size if you overextend and take too many prizes. Mm -hmm. The strategy for Chen Pao of having multiple attackers ready to go in play was something we saw a lot of Grant Chen establishing with Chen Pao and Radiant Greninja over and over again. But ideally, you want both Chen, Pao, EX. And I think if Grant Chen can land a really clutch Moonlight Shuriken, take out some Beldums, that opens up so much breathing room for a second Chen Pao to enter play and continue to keep this up. We are Pretty weak shifting turn. gears. Zama Zenta. This is an attacker that's great in the matchup. You know, still hits Chin Pao for weakness. You're all fine there, but it still needs retaliate damage, even with weakness. Something must be knocked out to activate that bonus damage. And so Andrew Hedrick going for Magnetic Lift. Uh, this 60 HP Beldum from uh, Silver Tempest, if I'm re remembering correctly, you search your deck for one card, shuffle your deck, put it on top. It's just a Cypher Maniac's code breaking or half of one that ends your <laughs> yeah. turn. 
forest seal breaking. <laughs> forest seal breaking. I love it. It's, uh, it's just enough for Andrew, and now in this spot for Grant. He's going to play down as many resources as he can. Buddy Buddy Poffin, along with that Shivery Chill, gonna load up the hand with the water energies, play down those additional basic Pokemon, and hope to see Irida or a Code Breaker with that Radiant Greninja. Give yourself that ability to threaten a, a decent setup. You already have the knockout onto the Beldum as with just a simple attachment of energy, but you, you really want to get a board state now. Mm -hmm. And you think players might shy away from going for knockouts on this Beldum in the active spot or going for Moonlight Shuriken because of the threat of Zamazenta, but it's the exact same I bet you don't got it mindset that Grant Chen showed us in game number one. You're still going to need Matangs in order to power up the Zamazenta just to take a revenge knockout. Yep. There's no Dialga V, no threat of Star Kronos. So this is Grant's moment to blow this game wide open and pull irreparably ahead. Yeah, your opponent hasn't shown you anything. Grant is going to take some risks at this point, and you might as well. Excalibur into the hand. I believe we see that Pokestop as well. You can attach this energy for the turn. Play down Super Rod, and then you can use Industrious Incisors. Follow that with the Pokestop if you don't see the supporter you're looking for. And if any of those cards are rare candy, Moonlight Shuriken's taking out two Beldums this turn. And already Grant is calculating it. I love the Super Rod here, putting that extra energy back in. Pokestop ready to go. Everell found. And if you're Andrew, if that does come to pass. Moonlight Shuriken comes through. Beldum goes down. Second Beldum goes down. I wish, you know, Andrew Hedrick was the type of player that would sh look at his hand when it's not his turn <laughs> so he could speculate a bit about what his lines are. That turn was a little weak. I see a Pokegear, but that's mm, really that's all not he it. has. Rare Candy needs to be fine here off the Pokestop if you want to really start to light things up. Not the case. Irida. Order lull. <laughs> It's going to be a Hail Blade. Discard one Water Energy, takes the knockout. Still confident that there's no, no Matangs. Whoa, Whoa, right at the top. How did that happen? The Magnetic Lift. How Woo. about that? The Matang sacrifice, the Beldum sacrificed itself to ensure that its brethren could evolve. Yep, Who could have possibly seen that coming? Uh, you're, you're already 9-0, <laughs> and you just continue to get this lucky in the finals. <laughs> How does he do it? But Professor's one research. Is found. You can get an attach from the hand onto Zamazenta, and with the research, finding hopefully a second Matang or an Ultra Ball, you've got two shots at finding two energy to strike back against Chen Pao. Immediately in the window, you see that Ultra Ball. That's second Matang. You have eight opportunities to see two energy cards. I like those chances. Seems like pretty high odds to me, Kyle. Oh. There's an Ultra Ball indeed. Ultra Ball for second Matang. Ultra Ball for another Dialga V. It's got to be Matang. Yeah, no real question here at this point. You have an opportunity. Protect from the Moonlight Shuriken. Get a ton of energy. Any excess energy you gain here will go on to the Dialga V. Keep that next attacker ready to go. This is it's such a difficult Pokemon for Grant to deal with. It's a single prizer, knocks out your Chempao, and one hit knockout. And what do you do? You return with a, a Chempao of your own, and you see the Ooh. Prime Catcher and the Super Rod added. Very nice Pokestop. None of, none of those were metal energies, and looks like Super Rod is ready to be played as well. So plenty of metal to be made here. So once these go back into the deck alongside a Dialga V, I like that as well. Once again, a pseudo mulligan off the Pokestops and those Pokemon, those cards right back into the deck. What's so great about the Zamazenta as well is it's just global pressure in this match. Once it gets powered up with energy, has a little bit of extra HP thanks to its ability. Once it has energy attached, it takes 30 less damage from attacks. You have to extend just that little bit more to take it down. And if you try to prime catcher or boss around it to take out other key targets, that retaliate will bring it right back into the active spot to strike back and wreak vengeance. All right, first opportunity, we see one metal energy 
Ooh, let's let's leave it all down to this last one. Grant's trying to use his one time. One time. It's there. It's there. Ooh. Just enough energy. No spillover for the Alga V, but this is the minimum that you were looking for for Andrew Hedrick. Yep, Retaliate lined up. Chimpao knocked out. Prize advantage over to the Dialga player for the first time in a long time. Grant Shen on the back foot. Raiden Greninja arrives in the active spot, but finds that his targets, Beldums, have grown up. This is post time skip. They've evolved into Matang, <laughs> and the Radiant Greninja is left without any really great targets. In order to take down the Zama Zenta, has an effective 160 HP. Yeah, there's a couple ways you could go about this situation. You could avoid the Zama Zenta altogether. You could work in the Iron Hands, use a Prime Catcher, try to take down Matang. Mm. Maybe go after the lifeline of the deck, which is the energies that can be accelerated. That is valid. With If you knock out a Matang, Zamazenta doesn't knock out the Iron Hands EX right away. We and see the Irida. And this is going to be Irida for Rare Candy. One more Water Pokemon. Iron Bundle is the grab. I think Baxcalibur was already in the hand. So the, the acceleration engine of the list finally coming to fruition. It's just a matter of finding the appropriate attacker. I'm not sure if Grant Shen has located his uh, lightning energy yet. Still needs the Super Rod to return Iron Hand's EX back into the deck. Trying to play this down. There's the back caliber. Grant Shen is flipping through his hands so fast, Kyle. I'm like trying to see, <laughs> is there an earthen vessel? Is there er it, super rod I'm seeing? Uh, it's, it's it's not there. If it's in the discard pile, then sure. But I don't know. I don't believe we've seen it just yet. Once Grant Shen has calculated the line and starts to follow through, you can't keep up with the blur of cards. Knows this deck back to front. The well. godfather of this <laughs> archetype, if you want to be that generous. The CEO. And knows exactly what he must do from this position. Well, the ordering's a little off. Iron Hands is in the discard pile and the lightning energy is in the deck, so... Mm -hmm. That's not that's not going to work for you. It's a huge debate here for Andrew as he doesn't want to walk into the potential of that Iron Hands Metang strategy, but you also don't want to lose your Star Kronos potential. But what knocks this out? Chen Pao. <laughs> We've got Zamazenta. That works out pretty well. I like this idea of Grant Chen just knocking out the Dialga V. If there's no threat of Star Kronos, you can count on the game going at a more predictable pace that you can potentially take advantage of. Well, this is also a way you can go about this. You're trading two for one if you can continue to recycle the Radiant Greninja. You can attack both Matang, and I'm sure you're wondering, well, why don't we go after this Zamazenta? That ability is a huge issue there. It would be only six damage counters you'd place on that Pokemon afterwards. So even going after it twice, you still would not knock that Pokemon out. And that's a turn passing with no knockouts taken. So Retaliate only deals 100 base damage. Andrew Hedrick, however, responds with the evolution into Dialga V-Star, benches a Beldum, and has two Metal Makers to high roll into a Star Kronos right now, Kyle. Can we see it one time? Maybe just Prime Catcher of Baxcalibur would work, too. <laughs> you have a little bit of time here. You can put some pressure on your opponent. I guess the debate now is, uh, are you more worried about the Baxcalibur or the Barrel? But knowing that the Baxcalibur, the second one, is hanging out here in the discard pile. Refresh my memory. Is Bax weak to metal? I believe as so. As well? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Just, just double checking. I'm always so worried about just knocking out Chen Pao's, but going after Baxcalibur has been a key strategy for this matchup for quite some time. Yeah, it uh, lines up very nicely here. You can remove that Pokemon, put all the pressure on your opponent to find the Super Rod, which clearly they weren't able to show you previously, or they would have gone for maybe that Iron Hands we talked about. And... Bench is Dialga V. Now the pressure begins to mount. The Radiant Greninja threatening to Moonlight Shuriken take down these Matangs, but with two more turns getting reps of Metal Maker, I think enough energy can be accelerated this turn that manual attachments are enough to get him there over the finish line into Star Kronos territory. 
Yeah, maybe Andrew wanted to play that buddy buddy pop in before the nest ball. Now the card's stuck in the hand, but oh, either way, yeah. finds that Diaga V, fills the bench up. And now you want to make as much metal as possible, start to load up, have those attackers ready to roll for when you can potentially have that additional turn. We're just throwing away resources, but that's wow. how it goes sometimes. Now that Andrew Hedrick is set up in play, is giving up a lot of utility, doesn't want supporters, doesn't want responsive cards any longer, thin the deck down, turn this entire deck into Metal Energy. Three found off the first Metal Maker. Hang on a second. <laughs> so about that Star Chronos well, idea. You don't put all your eggs in that basket just yet. Safety and first. Andrew Hedrick plays so smart and respectfully it when any other player there. would go mad with power. We Every other Dialga player would have full attach there and just we, gone mad with power. We haven't seen energy attachment for the turn. It's it's still there. You oh he's so just, so patient, so much discipline with the power of this Dialga V Star. Doesn't want to use the Star Cronus until it's absolutely one hundred percent devastating for Grant Shen. It's just going to say, I've already got the knockout and the active. I'm going to keep this split threat of stacking up multiple possible Star Chronos for when the time is right. Backscalibur goes down, forcing Grant Shen's hand. Do you have another rare candy, my friend? Man. I mean, look look at I'm so Grant angry, Shen. but I have to respect it. He's disheveled. He's just, how do I do this? There are nine metal energies in play. An inevitable second turn looming for your opponent who's already up to two additional prize cards on you. And you have no Backscalibur. They're all in the discard pile. Andrew Hedrick showed up at this tournament not anticipating this much Chen Pao and was forced over the course of two days to learn it very quickly. And Grant Shen going up against Dialga, a deck he certainly wasn't expecting to play against in the finals of the Indianapolis Regional Championships, but now is thinking quickly, goes for Super Rod to bring Frigibax and Baxcalibur back into the deck. And Iron Hands EX, is that still an option? No, just wants the second Baxcalibur instead. Yeah, at this point, you, you almost need to threaten both of those as your opponent if they steal an extra turn. Even, mm -hmm. even one boss's orders removing that threat would mean game over. So with Backscalibers now loaded into the deck, Grant Shen can still keep the Super Cold alive and well. It's a matter of getting around this Zamazenta, trying to cut off this Dialga V-Star on the bench that is one energy away from Star Kronos. Viparel for one card, plenty of Iridas in hand. That's going to be the play here. You can find Rare Candy and Backscalibur. And I guess, Kyle, it's Moonlight Shuriken. Take out the Matangs. Hope that Andrew Hedrick doesn't have another uh, Metal Energy in hand. He doesn't even love Rare Candy Back Salary because you can't capitalize on the situation. It, if mm -hmm. you evolve that Pokemon, that's a, a, a precious resource. But the other side of that coin is your opponent can Iono you, and you lose the opportunity to, to have that Pokemon once more. So the, the two Frigibacks threatening seems a little more valuable in this spot. And, and this Radiant is, Greninja's basically made its mind up already. Mm -hmm. This is the weakness of the deck, so to speak. You're, you're funneled into situations like this where you must meet threats with very specific attackers. And if those attackers put you in an awkward spot in a terrible liability, the deck can really struggle to find its footing. After Moonlight Shuriken finishes the job, takes two prizes and knocks out the Matang, no more metal will be made as yet. It's back over to Andrew Hedrick. Retaliate is back online thanks to those knockouts. Zamazenta can take the prize card here in an active spot, or will Andrew Hedrick star Cronus to put himself down to one prize card remaining? to virtually seal the game, double boss's orders would be that avenue. You have the energy attachment for the Dog of V-Star. Radiant Greninja can start to inch you one step closer as we see that boss's orders hanging out in the deck. There's a lot of metal energy already in play. There's two in the hand. 
So something needs to retreat or get knocked out for Super Rod to even make Metal Maker worth. And I think that Andrew Hedrick has done the damage. I'm finally excited for the, the Mu EX to come down. But there's, <laughs> there's, there's no metal energies left to potentially copy a Moonlight Shuriken and remove the Frigid Paxes. That's always such a cheeky line. It's one that you can do in several different matchups. But Andrew Hedrick has time and time again shied away from benching that All potential right, don't be liability. Boss. Just wants to see other cards. Ooh. That's fine. Just gets a super rod. We're all good, Kyle. Of course, you still have a little bit of time to find the second boss disorders. If the plan is to target down both of these Pokemon, if there is no Backscalibur, the game ends when Grant finally is uh, allowed to play Pokemon once more after the Kronos. Super Rod putting key Pokemon back into the deck. Buddy Poffin picks up the Beldum that was just returned with the Super Rod. Nice full bench. Potential for more Metal Makers on Matang. And, and th this goes back into that manipulation that you can start to, to do when you only have, what, 12 to 15 cards remaining in deck. If you take that Star Chrono's turn and then evolve into these Metangs, find the Metangs, whatever it may be, mm. you, can, you can see where the boss's order is. If you haven't seen it yet, then you have the ability to maybe draw into that with Radiant Greninja or use a shuffle effect to give yourself better odds. This is incredibly fascinating. Finds the Metang. And Andrew Hedrick manipulating a thin deck like this is something you usually only used to see in, uh, you know, Lost Zone decks, maybe older styles of Dialga pre-rotation with Energy Recycler. Manually retreats the Zombazenta to bring Dialga V-Star into the active spot. There's still one more Metal Energy in the hand to attach for turn. Yep, you, well, you can use Metal Maker. You'd rather not attach this energy for the turn, so mm -hmm. you can hold on to it for the turn following Star Chronos, so you can reuse that Radiant Greninja once more. If that finds the boss's orders, then you basically seal this game out. Yeah, that's very smart. Oh, yeah, we're not, we're not going to see the Metal Maker. So there's the attachment. Okay. No none boss of, in none these None of those cards. cards are boss's orders. And there was one energy. Yeah, I have to think that's... Not ideal. If you could hold that energy to, to dig a little further, that'd be better. But And what's beautiful is after benching the Beldum and then using Star Kronos, your next turn comes back around and you can evolve this Beldum immediately. So that's another Metal Maker that Hedrick has potential access to. Not a lot of fanfare with this, uh, <laughs> with this V Star power being used, but. You can see how meticulous he has been with this deck. Approaching Dialga V-Star with a completely new mindset. This isn't a deck that wants to start Kronos immediately. I can save it for this late game scenario and pull so far ahead that my opponent has no hope. Draws the Matang now, thanks to concealed cards, conserving that energy in the hand. Yeah, I, I, we didn't see the boss's orders played, and then Pokegear was found, which could have found another boss's orders. Double Frigibax could have been removed, potentially, if you find that resource. But this also leads to a board that's basically insurmountable from mm -hmm. at this point. You're going to have two fully loaded Talc V stars ready to roll. Just leave enough energies to retreat a Pokemon if your opponent is able to prime catcher you and try to stall out at this point. That's exactly the line, Kyle. Andrew Hedrick says, I don't care if you have an, another Backscalibur, if you can get a Chen Pao in play, powered up, even Iron Hands at this point. I have every option under the sun to attack with, and as long as Matang doesn't get stranded in the active, we should be good to go. Metal Maker. Metal Maker, once again, not seeing boss. Sees energies and doesn't care about them as well. You you'll have access to those energies at any point in time with Metal Maker down the road. Uh, yeah, I love the discipline here, leaving these in the deck so that Metal Maker can attach these to anything that possibly gets stranded in the active spot. One prize card remaining for Andrew Hedrick. It's back over to Grant Shen. One Frigibax remaining. No Chen Pao currently in play. One Pokestop, and a Dream. Draws for turn. It's a Buddy Buddy Poffin. Chen Pao's in the hand. There's an Irida to be played. Rare Candy's there, too. But how many energies is it to knock out 280 HP? Oh, prime Catcher. You can 
and try to stall, use... Yeah, it's not even worth giving it a shot at that point. Dialga V-Star and Andrew Hedrick are making their way to a third regional championship here in Indianapolis. Absolutely phenomenal to bring a breakout deck like this to Indianapolis. Believe in the hype. I heard a rumor this beach Charizard, and instead showing up at the venue and playing against 